That's okay. I, I, most of my students don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, it means perpendicular. Normal force is perpendicular to the surfaces of contact. If you didn't write that down before under the direction of the force relative to the objects, you need to make sure you do. It is perpendicular. My surfaces are down at an angle, so it is perpendicular to that. I have a normal force going this way and a normal force going this way. Perpendicular to the object or what? To the surface of contact. Surfaces of contact basically are at an angle. So normal force is at an angle. Erica, did you get to I, I might have just zipped through it too quickly. What? Did, About the perpendicular. Perp, yes. Yeah. You're good? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Rookie mistake number whatever. Six, seven, whatever. People always wanting, too many students always want normal force to be opposite the direction of weight. It's not. All the early examples it is, but it's not always. It's always perpendicular to the surfaces. And in the case when something is not level, the normal force is not opposite the weight. Part of it is, part, because the normal force is up and to the right, acting on the box. Part of it is opposing the weight, but it's not. This box is going to fall. It's just not going to fall straight down. It's going to fall at an angle. So I have two objects that are touching, and so I got my two pair, I got my pair, and so normal force is done. Friction. Something I did not write down before is that friction opposes the desired relative motion. And that should have been written down when I did that list. Write down now. Friction. And what I mean by relative is the box is going to move relative to the ramp. So from the ramp's point of view, which way is the box going to go? Yeah. Which way is friction therefore going to act? Oh. Opposite, yep. So friction is going to act this way on the box and this way on the ramp. And um, questions on box on ramp. Now, if this were physics 151, and it's not, if it's physics 151, all I have to tell you is the mass of the box from which you can calculate the weight. I give you this angle and then you can calculate what the normal force is and then there's another piece of information which we'll talk about in chapter four uh, where you can then find what the friction is and then from that predict what the acceleration of the box is. We're not going to go that far but just to let you have some sense of the context of where this falls in physics. All right, we're going to do something very similar to this. This is not going to be, not just box on ramp, box on ramp on ground. Ground. Ramp. Box. The ramp is now separate from the ground. Wedge 
there, but. Red, brown, mass. So we're now dealing with I have three objects now. I've got my box, I've got the red, I've got the brown, and I got my checklist. What can we eliminate? I think someone just said it. All right. What? I'm not sure why your phone is off. I'm doing something. Yeah, why are you without the phone out? Okay. All right, so let's go through. Wait, acting which way on what? Believe the box is turned around. Oh, somebody did the other part. I heard brown. I'm assuming that's what you meant. I heard a voice over here. That's what I was saying. I was saying it was there. Okay. All right. What else? Didn't it feel weird when Ramsey was going down? Yep. I think the weight goes up and down on the ground, right? Yeah, there would be another one up okay. here. Okay. Yep. Let's not forget that. The V and R. Is it okay if we, if I like in parentheses for the subject, does it matter? No. Okay. I'll get confused. All right, so wait, so I have two small objects, got two pairs, done. All right, normal force. The box is moving out. Okay. Sorry, the normal force on the box is up? Yeah. Diagonally? Yes. Oh, yeah. Y is a D, and where's the other part of that pair? Uh, up, or down the ramp diagonally, or that way. Because they're opposite. That way? Yeah. Yeah. Not that way. Yeah, that way. Oh, that yeah, they are opposite each yeah. other, but this one's off like that. What else? So you've got a look on your on your face that says you're confused by something. Am I misreading? So you got. I'm not confused. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure. So we got another. Well, we going down or ground? I don't know how to do, like say that the the normal like the box is the other ground. Like they're like going to ground down. From the box. Yeah. No. Is the box touching the ground? Oh, no. Okay. okay. What is touching the ground? Yeah. The ramp. Yeah, so we got a pair there. Which way is it acting? Either on ramp or ground? Ramp is up. And then down on ground. I have two sets of objects that are touching. I got ramp and box touching, so I got my normal force there. I got ramp and ground touching. I got my normal force pair there. Done. Box and the ground don't touch each other. The normal force. And now friction. So the box friction is going that way. This will be the one that's going to turn out the So. So it'll actually be sliding down to where the ground is like that. Yeah, somebody just said on the ramp. The box is sliding down the ramp, it's causing friction down on the ramp. Yeah. But the friction on the box is up. It opposes. Friction hates 
Yeah. Yeah, there's one there. I just wanted to make sure that you Yeah, were... that's why I'm asking. Okay. Yeah. All right. I didn't mean to go through here. Oh, there's a postcard there. I also have another normal force pair, so potentially another friction. Which way is the friction acting on the ramp? Uh, friction is going to be parallel to the surfaces, so since my surfaces here between ramp and ground are this way, it's either going to be left or right. It's going to be the opposite of the way the block's moving, right? The block's going to the right, the ramp's going to move to the left. Therefore, which way is the friction acting on the ramp? So we try to simulate this. I got block, I got box. If the box is heavy enough, think about which way this ramp wants to go. Yeah, so the ramp wants to go to the left. Therefore, which way is friction acting on the ramp? There are a lot of problems where friction is the toughest part of trying to figure out which way it's going to go. And part of it, one of the reasons I save it till the end is it's helpful sometimes to know what all the other forces are that to know which way friction is going to act. And we'll get into that when we get to oil and sled. So you're saying there's friction on the ground? Um, the, the ramp on the ground. Yes. So the ramp is moving. Not necessarily. So what's the friction? It's whether desired movement. If the ground were frictionless, the ramp would move. But if here's a table on the floor. I'm pushing on the table. The table's not sliding because friction is keeping it in place. And so what we'll get to in chapter four is we'll talk about the two different types of friction. There's what's called static friction, where it's keeping something from moving at all, keeping something from sliding, I should say. And then there's kinetic friction, where the two objects will actually slide. Now, I did not give enough information here to know whether this ramp would actually slide or not, but the friction is still going to act in the same direction, regardless of whether it slides or not. All right. Any questions up to here? Any other questions? And at this point, the labels just get too complicated. Uh, we'll make this all one thing. We will throw a pulley into it now. I may work. Got to come in at some point. All right, first off, what can we eliminate? Other. And that's it. A here, I got B here. I'm going to draw the rope and then now whether the pulley is considered a separate object or not really depends upon the problem. Typically the pulley is not considered part of it. Depends upon how bad. If it's a really bad pulley you do need to consider it. If it's a decent pulley you don't. So one of the reasons on the complex problem on the test I draw the object separate just so that you don't have to guess of, oh, is the pulley part of an object or do I do the pulley separate? Mm -hmm. So I'm drawing the pulley as part of this ramp here just so that to let you know you don't, you treat the pulley as just part of the ramp. You don't have to worry about forces between the pulley and the ramp. That would be called an internal force. And if you started taking into account internal forces, it will drive you into insanity. 
Because then you start getting into left half of the box and right half of the box. Maybe upper quadrant of the box and lower quadrant of the box. Every little molecule in the box and every other molecule in the box. So internal forces, we will, fortunately, they are not the forces we concern ourselves with. And yes, I am a cheap jet. I expect to only work on the week one. I'm not expecting any of you to have been affected by this. All right, so F down, uh, let's say friction for last. What do we got? Somebody give me one force acting on some object in some direction. The way the box turned around. Which box? Um, both of them. The weight A, and then there's, of course, there's weight A over here. Weight B. Weight B. I have just two small objects besides the huge one, so weight is done. B is at a jumpy tilt. Mm. Yeah. B is on the right. My recommendation, and I mentioned, I did not mention this last time. I thought it intensely, and some of you probably didn't read my mind. Try to draw the objects in the same orientation as they are over there. Mm -hmm. So since B is at a tilt, put B at a tilt over here. Okay. It's not required, but it's recommended. All right, another force acting on another object. There is a diagonal loving force, or a diagonal, um, like a normal force on B that's going out and coming in on the right. No, I was going to ask a question about the rotate, you give rope in the full width. Are there any forces between the two boxes that are going through the rope? Are there normal forces between the boxes? Are there any forces? Or are we even... Are there forces between the box and the rope? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, I just want to make sure that we were... Yeah, got to bring attention into it. Uh, we got another normal force pair, though. It's on the box of A, the normal force is going up. What is box A touching? Uh, the We're going to call that tension. Okay. Let's get the other normal force pair, which is definitely a normal force pair. The rope in the box. The rope in the box, that, that's going to be called tension. Think about what's touching. Rope and box are touching, indeed, or that's tension. Oh, the box and the ramp. The uh, box and the ramp, we got that normal force there. The ground and the ramp, right? Uh, I made this all one object here. Okay. The rope and the pulley? Yes. I thought you said we were the pulley, so I didn't know. No, we're not looking at the different forces between the pulley and the ramp. We're not worried about that. Okay. But pulley and rope are still touching. Sorry if that came across wrong. Okay. Now, I don't know, without more detail, I don't know the exact direction of the normal force acting on the rope. I know that the rope touches, the rope is going to be touching the pulley somewhere in this range right here. But you would need to know the angle, you would need to know the masses in order to know which way it's act, really acting. So 
you know, it's somewhere in that direction. So why is it P? Oh, is that the rope up there? Yeah, that's the rope up there. <laughs> And I will say on the complex force diagram problem, so occasionally I'll put a ceiling in there. <laughs> Ceilings are probably the most common thing missed. Mm -hmm. On the complex, on the complex problem, on for test level complex problem, sometimes they'll have a ceiling involved in the problem, and the ceiling is probably the most common object missed. Probably because it looks like a horizontal line right underneath a horizontal line. And people, it looks more like a divider. Is that arrow going down for the normal force with the pulley? Yes, yeah, opposite, whatever the direction is. Mm. All right, before we get onto the, the, the tension or the friction, why do I not have a weight on the rope? But the rope, if you've ever picked up a big rope, then, you know, it definitely has some weight. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, then there's a relative tension of the, um, the boxes holding it down. No, no, that's, it, the, the reason is much simpler than that. Is it because it's not human? The rope is getting pulled down by the boxes, so the weight would be going down, right? Well, weight is still going to be acting down whether the boxes are there or not. No, the reason why, and is that this rope, I'm going to call it an ideal rope. Uh, Masasa calls it the magic rope, but it's, I, the ideal rope has three major characteristics. It is massless. It is frictionless. And it is stretchless. The stretchless bit is A and B will move together. I'm not going to have A suddenly. It's not like a piece of elastic where A is going to move and B just sits there. 